Okay. Good morning. I am going to switch my camera around. Can you hear me, Alice? I just haven't been talking. I've been oh, yes, learning. No. Okay. Yeah. We're just gonna let everyone kind of filter in. Um, it is 1027, so we have a couple of minutes. And I'm just gonna make sure everyone has their design and their link. It's always a little bit of a frenzy. Jeannie, did you end yeah. up putting SF-101 on any of the fabric? Uh, I did if it told me to. Let's see. It doesn't uh, say. I, it, it does not say to, but that fabric is so thin. I just didn't know if you did. Yeah, you know what? It wasn't on the supply list, so I don't think I did it. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I totally see what you're saying. I was talking with Dana and like, you know, it would be nice maybe, hang on, I'm just letting people in as we speak, but here is like a sample and we were talking about it. And we we're like, you know, it would have been nice to add some quilting maybe to the back piece. This like piece back here, I think would have looked really pretty if we had added quilting to that. Let me look at this one. Um, or batting. You know what I mean? So it was a little bit beefier, but it didn't call for that. I think the front looks really cute, but maybe with this one, a little fusible fleece would have looked, would have been really nice just to give it that feel. Um, you know, we're full of suggestions, right? Let's call Kim up. Hey, we have some <laughs> suggestions for you for your roll up pouch. But yeah, I think something a little beefier would have been really, really cute for this. But here are the two pouches. So, okay. Um, we're just going to have some more people. If you want to put some SF 101 on it, you're welcome to still, uh, yes, some people are going to be following along today and that's totally fine. This is the one, um, that Dana did with her tulip pink fabric and, uh, and we have options for the pocket and, you know, I mean, how cute is that? Look at her ribbon. I didn't even look at that. So you've got lots of different options. All right, couple more minutes and then we'll go ahead and get started. If you wanna put your design, load your design in the machine, you can do that. I'm gonna be doing the eight by 12 size, but I did the five by seven in the video. And 
it is 10 30 let's go ahead and just start talking about our our project and we'll let other people just filter in so there are two different sizes for this project let me scoot this towards me a little bit um there's the five by seven which is going to be this little, little itty bitty. This would be great uh, if you wanted to just throw it in your purse and maybe you just wanted, like I think about my daughter. I was like, oh, she could put her lip gloss in here and she could put like, you know, some money in here or something that she needs. And uh, it's just going to be this little cute roll up. Um, this is the size that we're going to be doing today, which is going to be the eight by 12. And you're going to see it's quite a bit bigger than the five by seven. So just a fun size. I was confused the first time I loaded the design because there were two five by seven sizes, a six by 10, and then there was an eight by 12. And so it's done in two parts. So if you're doing the itty bitty, you're gonna be doing um, part A and then part B. If you're doing the eight by 12, one of the sizes goes into the six by 10 and then the other one goes into the eight by 12. What if you don't have a six by 10? Don't worry about it. I cut your stabilizer so you can put it in your eight by 12, okay? Right. Uh, what if you don't have the eight by 12? That's a little bit of a bigger issue because you need to have a hoop size at least that big. If you don't, then you might just be doing the five by seven today. Hopefully that answers your question. So um, let me grab this so I can see you. Just moving my computer. Oh, shoot. So here are my two hoop sizes. Here's my six by 10. And like I said, you don't have to use it. You could use your eight by 12 for both of these hoopings. And is there are there any questions before we get started? All right. Let's go ahead and let get started. I'm just taking a peek to see who's here today. All right. So uh, first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and we're going to hoop our medium cutaway. And so you should have two pieces in your kit. So go ahead and open up your kit if you have the kit. If you're doing something totally different, I love that. Don't lose your pieces because right now I can see my vinyls in here. So make sure that you grab your vinyl out of there. You should have a piece of vinyl. And I'm going to grab one of my pieces of cutaway stabilizer. When we first put it together, I think there was one piece. And then I read the uh, what I, I did my thing before we sent him out. And I was like, oh, my goodness, they need two. And I had to open up every single kit and re-put them in there. But um, these are the thread colors that I'm going to be using today. We're going to be working on getting some colors up on our site because we're not, we don't sell the glide, but I carry actually a decent amount of it. Hang on, I'm just letting Miss Molly in. But I'm going to be using Tidewater, Pistachio, and Linen. Those are the three colors. These are for my stash. That's why they're all used up. I use them all the time. And... Um, we're going to be doing part A. So if you want to go ahead and hoop up in your six by 10, you can go ahead and do that. And then we're going to load part A. So don't forget, you have little arrows on the top of your hoop. That's the top of it and it has a little nub. That's how you know which way is up. If you don't have a six by 10, you should get one. If you do, especially if you do a lot of Kimberbell, they use it a lot in their projects. And it's just a good size. I call this one the egg. Um, get it in there. You have your hoop tightener. Here's your hoop tightener. You can go ahead and pull inward to make sure it's nice and flat. Don't do that. If you're using tearaway, it'll just rip. This is cutaway though. And then you can just give it a little turn just a little bit of a turn, but it should just not be loose enough for you to just undo by hand. Although it should be snug is what I'm saying. All right, I'm gonna take this to the machine. Here we're we doing the six by 10. Um, we're um, doing the eight by 12 size. So there is no six by 10 size for this, but the first design, I'm gonna just show you what I mean by that. I know okay. it's confusing. Um, if you look here in your instructions, there's the five by seven size and it's done in two hoopings in the five by seven part A and part B. And then if you're doing the eight by 12 size, the first hooping is in your six by 10 for part A and then part B is gonna be in the eight by 12. I know that's confusing. 
right? You do not have to use a six by 10 for this first hooping. Your stabilizer is big enough to go in your eight by 12. So if you want to put both of them in the eight by 12, you can do that. Does that answer your question, Miss Linda? Well, actually, I'm trying to find part A and B because there's a roll up and a roll up two twos. So I didn't know. Um... Let's go ahead. Are you talking about Pip pulling up the design? Yes. Okay, let's pull up the design. And I'm going to take my hoop right now and you can just go ahead and slide it on if you want. Okay. Here you have your bobbin in, so you don't mm -hmm. have to take it off. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide it on. Let's go into our machine. We got a new filming arm here, it's a little stiff. Okay, so you're gonna have two five by sevens. The first one's gonna be part A, the second one's gonna be part B. And then if you look down here, you have the same thing, part A, part B. Part A is the six by 10. So you should have four different designs. Do you have those, Linda, the four? Yes. Okay, go ahead and load the one that says six by 10 if you can't see it. If you are on a Luminaire and Solaris, look, you can pinch your designs and you can't see as much information on them, but you can also pull apart and now you can see more information. So make sure your thumbnails are as big as they can be so you get that experience of all the information. And you can minimize and maximize your view area. This is your preview. You can minimize that if you want to look at your designs. And then you can make that go down so you have your preview. So I'm going to load my 6 by 10. There it is showing in my preview window. Give me a thumbs up if you've got your design loaded. You're ready to go. And if you don't, do you need help? Is there anyone that needs help? Let me know. Miss Linda, did you get it up? I did, thank you. I'm using an eight by 12, so I'll just scoot it up, right? When yeah, I start. you don't even have to scoot it up because we're okay. not, the only time I scoot it up is if I'm leaving it on the roll and I'm trying okay. to maximize my use of stabilizer. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in my six by 10. Let's go ahead and set it. I always like to choose my hoop size. If you are leaving your stabilizer on the roll, go ahead and go to your settings button, which is the one that looks like notebook paper. Oh, look, we have an, we have an update. If anyone has, does anyone else have an exclamation part in your upper left-hand corner? Because I'll update my machine at the end of the class and you can do it with me if you've never done it before. So if you want to do the online update, we can do that together. I'll do that at the end. Remind me. I'm going to go to my notebook paper and I'm going to choose my eight by or my I'm using a six by 10, which is really this six and a half by ten and a half. OK, let me let Miss Angela in. Uh, check your settings. So let's look at our settings. I am going to be stitching at the fastest setting, a thousand fifty stitches per minute. If that makes you uncomfortable, let's have you at least stick to eight hundred to nine hundred stitches per minute. So choose one of those, make sure your tension's at zero, your foot height is at default, you'll know they're default because they'll be in the black boxes. Make sure your needle is ending needle up. This is not sewing, it's embroidery, so you wanna end needle up. And make sure you're doing, if you're on the Luminaire Solaris, that you have embroidery foot auto down on. That just means you don't have to put foot down and then start, you can just hit start. All right, where are my instructions? Um, we're going to load part A. We did that. First thing we're going to do is stitch the batting placement line right here. When you see those double lines, that means color doesn't make a difference. Let's see what color does make a difference. And we'll put that in first. So I'm going to look for the first one right here. And I'm going to use pistachio. So I'm going to put my pistachio in right now. That's just going to be your light green, your mint green, whatever color you're using. So, and I'm going to touch embroidery. This is my layout screen, the screen from which we stitch out, okay? Let's go ahead and thread her up. Some of you have one piece of batting. Uh, our cut instructions said to like cut one big piece and you're gonna use part of it in um, one part in this part A and the other part in part B. You don't even have to um, go ahead and hit start. I'm gonna grab my batting out to see if I have one piece or two. Looks like I have two in mine. So the first piece you're gonna use is um, the lining, eight by nine. 
So Jeannie, if we have one big piece, do we just want to try to... I wouldn't, even cut it, I wouldn't even cut it down. I would just go ahead and like lay it down near the edge. Do you know what I mean? Like if you have one big piece, just lay it down on the edge. But if you have two pieces, first piece we're going to use is going to be the smaller piece. I have two pieces. Use this one. Don't use the big one. That's going to be for the other part. Okay. So uh, you're going to use the four and a half by eight and a half. That's going to be the first one that you're going to use. You have, there's my placement line. You have a nubby side, like a, like a, with like a lot of little nubs. And you have one that has dimples that go in that's smoother. You're going to spray on your nubbier side. That's the wrong side. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my spray tip and my KK Ganoel. I you can use that six by ten. Huh? Nope, I'm using it right now. You can also tape. I am not a taper. I'm a sprayer. So I'm going to grab this, put it in my spray tent, and I'm going to give it a little shot of spray. Whoop. Don't go crazy. You don't need a ton. Just want to hold it there in place. Don't spray in your machine, too. You don't want to make it all gunky. Now I'm going to lay it down. A lot of times we cut our batting to size. This is not cut to size. So we are going to do the tack down and we are going to do the trim on this. Lay your batting down and then you're going to stitch the batting tack down. You're just going to hit start. A lot of times when you have placement and tack down, placement is in turquoise, tack down is in orange. It does not mean that you have to put those colors in. That's just to let you know what you're doing. And go ahead and tack it down and trim. Let me know if you need help. Jeannie, if we're doing the five by seven, which design is first? Uh, you're going to be doing the design that has the little quilting on it, and it should say A. Okay, thank you. I'm late. I just got my stuff cut out. Um, So which one are we starting with? Which file are we starting with? You're going to do that has the, if you look at, um, you're going to have one, and you're, are you doing the five by seven, or are you doing the uh, eight? I'm doing the eight by 12. Okay, so it's going to have the writing on it, and it's also going to have the, it's going to, if you're doing 8 by 12, it says 6 by 10. So don't be confused. That one is the one you need. Okay, 6 by 10 then. And it has the writing on it. Okay. It has the writing on it. Okay, I'm catching okay. up here. Once you have the tack down, we are going to go ahead and trim. You get whatever. I would use some type of double curve. A big... Um, I'm a snip kind of girl, if I can do it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and snip and you wanna get close to the stitch, but don't cut the stitch. What happens if you cut the stitch? It's okay. You're going to have fabric that's going to go down over this. So just go ahead and trim. Actually, I'm going to use this. Let me just use this. These are my, uh, my embroidery. I mean, my um, double curved six inch. And if you need to slide off your hoop, by all means, slide off your hoop. You not have to do what I'm doing. Jamie, I know this is a crazy question, but I can't. Yeah. 
I can't read what size my hoops are. I have several hanging here. Okay. And there's no marking on them. If you are the eight by 12 and up, it says it on the hoop. So if you look at this one right here, and it's not a crazy question at all. I get it all the time. Oh, wait, this one doesn't say it on it. That's crazy. Usually eight inches and above, it says, let me grab this one. So here's my eight by eight. Wow. Actually, so what you can't do is you can't, maybe it's the, the I thought it was the eight, eight by 12 and up. Okay. Oh, well, my hoop says 200 by 300 millimeter. Okay, 200 by 300. Like this one on here says 240 by 360, and it gives the size nine and a half by 14. Um, I always thought the eight inch ones had it on. This is my eight by 12, and I know it well because it's just a good friend and I use it all the time. So Here's my eight by 12. This is the six by 10. You know what I'll do? Cause a lot of people have this question. I'm going to go ahead and I will put it on Graydon's list of things to do. She's one of the gal that works for us. I'm going to have her measure the inside of the hoop from top to bottom and left to right. And uh, we'll put together a little chart for you where it goes, you know, this is your six by 10 and we'll do it by the inside of the hoop because you can't measure here. There's a no so area. So the six by 10 is really from here to about here and here to about here. Um, this is what the eight by 12 looks like. And the seven by 12 is gonna be a little bit skinnier. So all I can do right now is kind of show it to you. And uh, cause are you trying to figure out what Judy, at the bottom on my eight by 12 hoop it, on the inside, it says 200 by, I mean, on the bottom, it says 200 by 300 millimeter for eight by 12. Okay. So, and like some of them say, yes, that's where it's at, right there. Yeah. Online. Some of them will say right here, starting with the eight inch ones. Um, I don't know why mine doesn't say that. Maybe this is an older one and it's not on there. So, uh, but you know, what we'll do is I'll have great and put together a little chart. Um, just know that you can't measure from here to here. That is not going to be accurate. It's going to be a little bit on the inside. Okay. All, All right. right. So once you have your uh, stabilizer, I'm sorry, your batting trim. Let me grab my instructions so I don't lead you astray. Trim the batting. We just did that. Stitch the zipper pocket lining placement line directly onto the stabilizer. We'll go ahead and do that. I think I skipped it in the instruction because it was right on top of it. So let's go ahead and stitch your, this is the zipper pocket lining placement line directly onto the stabilizer. And we're gonna grab our fabric. And the fabric that you're gonna go grab, zipper pocket lining is five. Let me make sure I'm grabbing the right one. We're gonna grab pr pretty petals, zipper pocket lining. Your zipper pocket lining is gonna be five by nine inches. So that's what you're grabbing. And it should look like this. And if you need to measure it, measure it. I was like having my uh, six and a half by 12 and a half ruler here. And that's gonna be your five by nine. Okay. Wow. I'm gonna give my- <laughs> Good. Are you okay, Miss Linda? I am because I go, which fabric do we use? So that helped five by nine and it's yeah. right here. So five by nine, grab your fabric. I'm gonna give it a little shot of spray and I'm gonna lay it down right on top of that. You guys know where I'm spraying, so I'm not gonna show you that part. Don't go crazy again. Just enough that it's gonna stick down and not slide around. And just go ahead and place it right. Let me get rid of this phone. Here we go. Lay it down. You can peek underneath to make sure you're going around the whole thing and just give it a little smooth out. And then it says, 
place the zipper pocket lining right side up, covering the placement line. Stitch the zipper pocket lining tack down. Do not trim the fabric at this time. Color does not make a difference. I'm just going to keep my pistachio in there. And I like to just lay my hand on it just to make sure it's nice and smooth. I like to tickle it in the corner just to make sure it's not getting puckered at all. And then if you look at your screen, and tack downs usually do go around twice. If you look at your screen, the next thing that it's gonna do is the quilting design. And your instructions are right here too. So we're gonna do this color does make a difference and that's where I'm using the pistachio. Right now it's showing the orange right here, which was the tack down and that's gonna be the quilting. So I already have my color in there. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit start. And I'm just gonna go ahead and hit start. And this is the quilting stitch. And then we're gonna be almost done with, uh, with the first step. Part A. I'm amazed at how quick I quickly I make a mess. Mess in here. And tighten it up. You are gonna need a marking tool for the next step. And what we're doing right now is we're doing this part of the pouch right here. So it's the quilted fabric right here behind the vinyl is what we're doing. I could not do this without you teaching it. Reading the rest of this is like, what? <laughs> no idea. Oh, I know, it. right? It's nice to have somebody just guide you through. <laughs> Thank God we have you. <laughs> <laughs> And so make sure you have a marking tool. I'm going to use this one. I love this because it has disappearing ink and then mark be gone. Or if you have a friction pen or whatever, any of those will work. I had two rotating Martelli mats. And so I was bringing one to the store and this was last year and I put it in my trunk and it was a hot day and I left it there. And when I went to go get it, it had totally warped. I was so upset because they're not cheap. Okay, we're going to take this out. Let's go ahead and we're going to put it over here. Note to self, do not leave cutting mats in car on a hot day. I don't know if anyone else has done that before. Um, okay, now what it wants you to do, the instructions just want you to go ahead and identify the right edge and we're gonna put an R so you know where it is. And it's just your orientation. This is where it slides on. Just go ahead and put an R right over here. And then you know that's the right side. Go outside of your stitching. And then it wants you to go ahead and remove the project from the hoop. And we're going to trim only the stabilizer um, to the edge of the fabric. So you're not going to trim on any of those lines. You're just going to trim the stabilizer so you can go ahead and pop it out. Mine's pretty tight. I snugged it down. Let's grab your rotary cutter. 
whatever ruler you want to use. I love my creative grids. They're my favorite. Where's my red we have a We have a navy one that's always supposed to be here. I'm going to just paint it like this. And just go ahead and trim that. It doesn't have to be totally perfect. Because I was just thinking, I wish I had my rotating mat right now and I wouldn't have to swing my fabric. There you go. And that is part A. And mine's not totally perfect, but you just want to trim it around just like that. I'm going to just go ahead and throw this away. And we are ready to do the next part. How are we doing? We're trimming. I'm watching you. I can see Kathy trimming. Miss Katharina is away from her machine, so I think she's trimming. So, Jeannie, did you cut the R off? I did not. You're not trimming. You're just trimming the stabilizer to the edge. So and you shouldn't have trimmed any of the fabric. And then the next step says cut it at the R. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. You know what? Irene is our resident. Follow the instruction girl and remind Jeannie that she might not have been done. Identify the right edge marked in direction step 11 using a quilting ruler and a, a rotary cutter. Trim only the right edge of the fabric along the fabric tack down. Yes, we need to trim that. So right on, only on the right side, you're going to trim right to that stitch. Along the fabric tack down. Thank you, Miss Irene. Yeah, that was me being done when I shouldn't have been done. So I have it right to the edge. I'm going to go ahead and cut it. You're cutting that whole right side off. I, I'm like a little, little bit, like I didn't cut right at that stitch, but that's good enough. You can see it right here. Okay. And here's the right side with the R. You can just toss that. Now we are done with part A. Jeannie? Yeah. Patrick would be proud of you. It's good enough. <laughs> you know when it's not good enough when he's sending stuff to you? I'm like, Patrick, I don't like the way that looks. And he's like, go away, is what he tells me. I'm like, Patrick, did you remember to put a candy in their package? It's like, go away. He, You know what he said to me? He goes, I forgot. He goes, this will keep them on their toes. Wondering if they got the candy or not is what he said to me. <laughs> Anyways, I just stepped away. So do right. you want to read before you go on? Do you cut right on that sew line? Right on, on the side? line. Right, right on, on the line or good enough. Okay. See where I'm like good enough, like right here? Yes. So the right side is coming off. The side that you march with the R. Thank you, Miss Irene. All right. I'm Looks like everyone did. How go ahead. When he said good enough rock, rock, rock climbing, that's no, it needs. Yeah. I did not like that either. I caught that too, Anna. I was like placing your gear when you're rock climbing. No, that should never be just good enough. It should be perfect. All right. We're going to go on to part two, completing the pouch. We're going to uh, fold this small pocket fabric in half widthwise wrong sides together. So your pocket, if you are doing the five by seven, the direction makes a difference um, because it's longer one way. Uh, so you're gonna fold it so the stripes are gonna be facing down and the fold is on the top. If you are doing the nine and a half by uh, the, well, I'm sorry, not, if you're doing the larger side, this is a square. This piece here is going to be um, pocket. It's nine and a half by nine and a half, so it doesn't make a difference. Here's the cutting. If you go to make more of these and you're doing it with directional fabric, the cutting instructions make a big difference. So just make sure that you're gonna fold this so the stripes are going up and down and that you're not doing it this way. You could, it's just gonna look different, right? You're just gonna have it going this way, but you really want it to be this way. So we're rehooping, <laughs> right, stabilizer? Yes. Yeah, we are going to rehoop. We're going to put another piece of medium cutaway in there. It says press well along the line. So go ahead and turn on your iron. We're going to give it a little pressy press. And you want to press it like this. So the fold 
is at the top and your lines are going vertical. Okay, we're gonna be doing this part right here, that pocket. While you're waiting for your iron to heat up, we're gonna grab your other piece of cutaway. And let's go ahead and hoop up. This time it makes a difference. You have to hoop up in your eight by 12. It won't fit into your six by 10. Let me grab this. Just if you're wondering right now and you wanna know if you have the right hoop, I'm gonna give you the dimensions. Inside your eight by 12, it is 14 inches top to bottom and about eight and three quarters left to right. So just grab the hoop that's 14 inches top to bottom and eight and three quarters left to right. And I'm just measuring from inside edge to inside edge. Okay, hoop up your cutaway. Will you add to our list for Graydon that she's gonna measure all the the inside of the hoops? We're gonna make a little chart. Oh, good, good. Um, do you have a copy of what you're doing the class for? Where's the um the roll kit? Aren't you doing the roll bag? Yeah. Do you have a cop? Is it here? The sample? The sample? I just want to show this. Yeah, class. yeah, yeah. Well, easier found and easier said than done. It should be right here, Lori, but. I don't see it, do you? No, I do not. I'm just gonna check. Here is this one. Is this it? Yeah, that's it. That's the little itty bitty. Okay, pull inward. Make sure it's like not bubbled at all. Grab your hoop tightener. You can hand tighten or you can grab your hoop tightener. Mine's pretty snug, but just go ahead and roll this. So much easier than just using your tips of your fingers. Make sure that you get one of these at some point, that hoop tightener which is really wonderful. Okay, my iron should be heated up now. I'm just gonna give this a little press. Yeah, I don't, how could I have lost that, uh, the other one? <laughs> Lori just laughed. She's like, uh-huh, because I have, that's my skill. I haven't changed my needle. Patrick would be okay. proud. Patrick would be mad. He it's okay. Be I think he, should be happy. he would be happy. <laughs> I have in mine, I don't even know what needle I have right now. I'm looking at the color on it. I can't see the top color. So I'm going to go ahead. My I'm hooped up. I'm going to go ahead and slide this on. Let's look at our instructions. It says... Um, Fold, we did that and we pressed it. And really I had you press it like this with the stripes going up and down. Uh, and now once you hoop the stabilizer, we did that, we're gonna load part B embroidery file into the machine. So it wants me to move, the, wants to move the carriage. I am just gonna go ahead and touch my home button. It'll clear my screen. Let's go embroidery. I'm going to the pocket. And I think I'm in my upper USB. And I just loaded the designs that we were gonna need for today. Mine is right down here, it says eight by 12. So we're gonna load that. This is what you should see on your screen. If you want a more detailed view, you know you have that I button right here. That's more information. You can go ahead and tap that. And now it's gonna give you a bigger picture. It tells you how big it is, how many stitches, all of that. And it gives you the colorless breakdown too. Uh, you can change the background. As well, if you're doing something like snow and it's fading into the white background, you could go dark. And I'm going to go ahead and close that. And I'm going to go ahead and hit set. We're not changing anything here. So I'm just going to touch embroidery. Does anyone need help? Are we all ready to stitch? We're all on this page? Yes. Sorry, right. I can't find my other one. So I may need to get Al to help me find the... Um, oh, where I'll, I'll let you... Find. When you what say you can't find it, what do we need for this? Um, for this one, you're going to need a couple different colors. And you can always look through the stitch out. So doesn't matter, doesn't matter right here. That's, I'm using pistachio for that. And then the little, um, this one that has the line through it, I'm using Tidewater when it comes to that. So I'm using Tidewater and pistachio, and I think I use linen as well. Was there a spot where we needed the white, the cream? Maybe not. 
So maybe it's just going to be Tide Pool and Linen. When you see the light green with the dot in it, that's when I'm using pistachio. When you see the dark kind of teal with the light through it, that's when I'm using uh, Tide Water. Okay, thank you. Did somebody need help finding the design? Do you have it? Okay. If you need help, let me know. All right. Design is loaded. First thing it wants you to do is it says stitch the batting placement line. Uh, since color doesn't make a difference, I always kind of go ahead to where the first color that will make a difference, and that's going to be the pistachio, and I still have that in from before. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit start. This is the placement line. Here's my uh, batting. I'm going to give this a little shot of spray on the on the kind of uh, side that's nubbier. Yes. You want the big piece. Yes. Miss Liz, how are you doing? You okay? okay. Uh, so I need to find the eight by 12, right? The eight by 12. Yep, there's only okay. one design that says eight by 12. And when you load it, it should look something like this. Okay, I found it. You found it? Okay, awesome. All right, and then can you catch me up a little bit? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, uh, just, are you hooped up? Um, I have the stabilizer. Yeah, just hit start. It's going to do the placement line for your batting. Right, yeah, just go to your layout page. So hit embroidery and then just hit start. All right. You have your placement line. You're going to grab that bigger piece of batting and you're going to lay it down. So I'm just going to go ahead and lay this down, make sure it covers the whole square. And you can check, you can flip it under, make sure you're covering on both sides and top to bottom. I look good. I'm just gonna go ahead and smooth it down. Look at your screen. It should be orange on your screen, an orange box. That's the tack down. So we're gonna go ahead, slide this back on. Sometimes these are sticky. Like, I don't know what it is. The eight by 12 is usually sticky. Just so you don't knock it out of calibration, I usually put my hand over here and I hold the end. I know the light's bright. And I slide it on that way so I don't move the carriage. Okay, let me make sure it's the tack down. Uh, place the lining project, covering the line, and stitch the batting tack down. So this is the tack down. Once you do the tack down, you're going to trim your batting. And just get your scissors, trim that batting once it's tacked down. And then we're going to do the placement line for the background fabric. And that's going to be your, it's called, um, I think it's Ice Castle, but you're going to be looking for this piece next. If you want to give it a little press, mine has like a little random line in it. That's kind of weird, but you can go ahead and give this a little press too while it's stitching this out. What piece was that? Which what size was that, Jeannie? You're going to have a larger piece of, it's like that mint green. It's called Ice Castle. And it's going to be, you know, kind of rectangular, squarish, rectangular-ish. Okay. I, I think you have only one piece that's going to be that color. I'm, I'm using my stash, so I was Okay. Uh, as so far as measurements go, that is okay. going to be... Um, that's the piece that's going to be eight and a half by nine and a half. So you should have a piece that's eight and a half by nine and a half. I'm going to go ahead and slide this back uh, and we are going to trim the batting. Eight and, a half by nine and a half. eight and a half by nine and a half. In your instructions, it's going to say fabric two lining. If you're doing the this the bigger size, eight and a half by nine and a half. Okay. This is the these are the measurements I'm going by. 
I cut it wrong. Okay. Just go ahead and give this a little trim. And double curved are the best. You've got one curve that goes over the edge of the hoop and one curve that comes away from like your stabilizer or get, just doesn't get it caught. And that curve also helps you get really close to the stitch. is off the rails there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Linda, you look like you're ready to go. <laughs> am, I holding you guys, am I like so slow today? I'm trying to keep everyone together. And I, I kind of watch you to see where everyone's at. Like Miss Katharina looks like she's ready to go. Kathy looks like she's ready to go. Okay, I'm going to hold this because it's tight going on. I want you to do a placement stitch. So just go ahead and hit start and let it do the placement stitch. Color doesn't make a difference. Make sure your needle's threaded, unlike mine. Uh -huh. And it just got sucked up. So I have to rethread, hang on. But you can go ahead and just do that placement stitch. This is just the I'm not even gonna go back stitches. Um, sometimes I will, but this is just a placement. So I just need a general idea where it's going. And let's look at our instructions so you know what's gonna be happening next. So what we just did were, was we trimmed the batting close to the stitch line. Now it wants you to stitch the lining placement line directly on the stabilizer. We're doing that right now. And then after that, step nine, place the lining fabric right side up. If you're using what we have in the kit, there is no right side, right or wrong side. So it doesn't matter. Just lay it down. But if you chose your own fabric, make sure you lay it right side up. I'm going to give mine a little shot of spray and then I'm going to lay it down. Um, Miss Liz, are you caught up? How are you doing? I have a page. I have three pages of people. I hope you're not feeling unloved. I have been looking just at page one, but I'll go to the other page and make sure everyone's doing okay. So I'm just going to lay this down. Amy, I'm fine. You're good? Okay. Thanks. If you need me, let me know. So I just gave mine a little shot of spray and I'm just going to smooth it down. I'm going to hold this back part while I slide this on because mine's a little sticky. You know what they told me at Baby Lock is they told me if your hoop is sticky, they said, go ahead and give it a little sand where it's dark. So I did do this with this hoop. I didn't want to like sand too much, but you can see where it rubs, where it goes on right there. And I just took a little piece of like... Um, like fine sandpaper and I just went and I was like should I do this I'm a little scared and I just went ahead and did it I think it's sliding on a little easier don't go crazy don't go crazy it's not like do it yourself sanding that dresser down but I did use a little bit to just sand it down okay once we get it on, it says stitch the lining tack down, do not trim. And color does make a difference. If you haven't put it in yet, put in your minty green. I'm using pistachio.
Just want to make sure you're not getting any puckers. And then it wants you to do the quilting design, which is just going to be that floral part. So just go ahead and once you have the tack down, just hit start and let it do the quilting. Quilting is going to be six minutes, about six minutes. Miss April, you look like you're stitching with us today. You doing okay? I'm good. I got my own colors. So okay. I'm just trying to determine that. I'm good. Thank okay. you. And that's the tack down. Don't trim. Just go ahead and hit start. Whatever color you want. If you want to change it to a different color, if you're an outside of the box kind of girl, go for it. I know some of you are loud and proud. Me, I'm scared. I'm like, oh no, what if it doesn't look good? <laughs> I don't trust myself. I never pick. I, I find that sometimes I go, you know what? Today, I'm going to be wild and crazy. And then I choose a color and it's horrible. So I just, most of the time, I just stick to what they tell me to use. Because then I go, you know what? It's fine, Jeannie. Live with it. And I can't. That's when that perfectionist kicks in. And there I am ripping stitches out. Good enough. Ah, uh, I need to be able to live by those words. But the struggle is real. Miss Cindy Benson, how are you? You can give me thumbs up. I'll just do, oh, I got like two arms up. Nice. Linda, you good? Awesome. 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 Miss Susie? Miss Liz, you doing okay? Excellent. Miss Kathy? Miss Kathy Bolin, who gets so much done. And then I have Miss Kathy with uh, lime green accessories in her room, which I love. Oh, okay, Kathy. Kathy Bolin is using Bonnie and Camille fabric. I think that was that from Moda. And I'm you're gonna have to show it to us when you're done because I'm sure it's gonna be gorgeous. Yeah, Patrick. What? I emailed. I emailed you. Yeah. Gorgeous. Look at that stitching. So much fun. Miss Katharina, you good? Excellent. Miss Pam Foster, I don't know if you're stitching with us today. Some people I just have like iPad, so I'm not really quite sure. I see Mary Jo, I think is watching and, and Cheryl's watching today. How about Molly Burgess? You good? I'm not uh, sewing today because I had surgery on my foot and I can't get up to my sewing room, but I'm watching. Okay, sounds good. Miss Lynn, I love seeing Miss Lynn's room always makes me feel uh, calm and at peace because there's no chaos like my room. Miss <laughs> Marlene, how are you? I think she stepped away. April, you look good. You're not crying. You're smiling. So I think you're okay. I'm good. I just had to change my thread because it wasn't dark. Okay. <laughs> A whole bunch of gals without their screens on, but I'll just, you you know, you can do, um, there's like, uh, I do like to see you because I want to know if you're crying, if I'm like tormenting you, but like you can, there is on your screen, I think um, for me, I have to go more and you have reactions. So you can go into your reactions and you can give me a little thumbs up and then it will, Put it on your screen right here. So there's my thumbs up. So you can give me a thumbs up or unmute and ask questions, whatever works for you. Miss Kathy just gave me a kind of thumbs up. Thank you. Miss And I got a thumbs up from Betty and Angela. How about Miss Connie? You doing okay? Um, I'm here. Okay. You doing okay? <laughs> yeah, that's my first time ever doing a live video class. So I'm, I guess I'm doing okay. I'm keeping up. You're doing good with me. <laughs> awesome. Leslie and Candace look like they're doing good. Sonia, you finally got your design. And we can, yeah. we can now 
make sure you get it earlier next time. So oh, yeah, um, okay. that's true. Um, I tried to make sure I had everything, but this is the third time I've tried to do this. And there's always some kind of interruption or disaster, and I'm determined not to let it get me down this time. So oh, yeah. Don't I'm let a it get you down. Behind, but no. I'm coming along. It's always stressful when you're scrambling. So maybe um, what we could do is we can check the email. I think I sent you an email with the email address I linked your design to. And uh -huh. if you ever have trouble getting it, like just let me know. I can walk you through it. We'll we'll make sure you're okay. Okay. Miss okay. Miss Alice. How are you doing back in New York? We good? Look at that stitching. Looks cute. So. Okay, after it finishes this stitching, what we're going to do next is we're going to do the stitching that goes like here on the top. I know that's hard to see, but... um. And I'm using the Tidewater, which is going to be just the darker teal. And it's going to stitch out, she lived the life she imagined. Isn't that amazing? Um, note, the 8x12 design sentiment is a single line. So it's just going to go across in one line. And it's just going to get stitched. And it gets stitched right over this. Sounds good, Miss Angela. So this is the 8x12 on the 5x7. It's on two lines. On the 8x12, it just stitches right across the very top. Pick whatever color makes your heart happy. It's coffee time. <laughs> I don't know what I did. Okay, so I've only been a coffee drinker for like maybe the past two or three years. I just never, I don't know. I felt like it always just made my tummy a little upset, but Patrick just makes the best coffees ever. I don't even like to go get coffee out because it doesn't, you know how you're used to it a certain way? And if you, it's not like that, you don't want it. So I just, I don't even like getting coffees out because I want, I, I want to be like, excuse me. Can my husband come behind the counter and prepare my coffee for me? Because <laughs> he's so good. <laughs> Although when we were in Vegas, we had a Starbucks in our hotel and they had, I can't remember, it was a, haz it was a hazelnut latte. And so Patrick was going and getting this for us every morning, one for me, uh, Violet and himself. And then he told me they were $9 a piece. I was like, no more. Because I was like, I can't believe I'm spending $9 on a coffee. All right, I'm going to change my color. When I And I always show people this. I actually already, I'll show you when I, when I do the next color. I don't cut and pull the thread out from the bottom. I just unthread from the top. I'll show you what I mean. I'm putting in my Tide Pool, one of my favorites. Oh, no, it's Tide Water. Sorry, Tide Water. Just go ahead and thread her up and hit start, whatever color you want for the writing. Didn't coffees like back in the day, wasn't it like 50 cents? <laughs> it was so, but it's not fancy. Not like what they give you today. Miss Marlene, do you have a question? You're muted. What is the color on uh, Tidewater Glide? What is, uh, do you mean the number? Yes, that's what I meant. It is 65483. I'll get some of that. You use that all the time, I think. I use it all the time. And that's another thing we're putting on Graydon's list. We're going to have her uh, start listing the glide threads. We don't have them up right now, but we'll put them up. Miss hmm. Kathy, how's the weather in Canada? Kathy T. Um, it's actually sunny today and the snow is 
melting. So it's a good day. How much snow do you guys have on the ground up there? Right now, not that much. Um, probably just a few inches because it got warm a couple of weeks ago and it started to all melt and then we got snow again. So okay. yeah, we don't have that much right now. Um, during the winter, depends. Last year we had about six to eight feet of snow. Yes. It was horrible. Wow. Uh, this year, I think it was maybe mm, three, three and a half feet, maybe four yeah. feet that we ended up with. But yeah, 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 it still gets really cold at night, though. It goes down to like in the teens. So, but that's per perfect for putting your cold feet on your hubby. <laughs> well, I don't have one of those. So, <laughs> I might have the cold dog, feet, but no hubby. The dog you can cuddle. I cuddle hard I with my dog. <laughs> I do. I do. Yeah. Um, so, yes, Marlene. Thank you. Uh, do you have any of that glide in the store? Yeah, I yeah. If you send me a note, I'll pop it in with the uh, with the other stuff. Okay, and because I, I, I think you have a couple of orders, so you'll probably have a um, a refund, okay. and I can just I can use the shipping. So oh, just send me a note so I remember. Okay, I will. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, and the glide thread is like really reasonable. I want to say it's $4.99 a spool and it stitches out beautifully. That's really crazy, Jeannie, because I went to the quilt show last weekend and it was $12 a spool. For just a little tiny mini cone? For the same cone that you sent me for the project. Oh, goodness. I, I, I guess I have to up my prices <laughs> now. <laughs> Uh, we, yeah, we usually do. We usually do the mini cones, the glide for four ninety nine. Yeah, up here in Canada, um, it's anywhere from six to seven dollars for the minis and eighteen for the um, large. Wow. So we do I, our ice accord six seventy. Is it six forty nine or six seventy five a spool? And then I think we do the king cones for um for $16.99, but if you ever need anything, you want me to special order stuff, get you big cones of anything, just let me know. Yeah. After we finish this, we're gonna stitch the small pocket placement line. It does say to put your lighter, uh, your lighter mint green in. So I'm gonna be putting the pistachio back in. How are we doing? We almost done with the sentiment. You guys waiting on me? No, we're good. Just finished with you. Awesome. I'm just going to look. Liz, are you almost done? I can see your thing moving. You're good? Okay. Miss Cindy, we ready? We can go. Let's do the next step. It's just placement lines. So put in your next color. I'm going to put this in. We're going to stitch placement lines. Let's thread her up. Can I just let go? Where's my thread? Hang on. Let me get my hand in here. Okay. Just hit start. And this color matches pretty well. So just keep your eye on it. And you're going to grab your piece of fabric that we pressed. And that's going to be the one with the stripes if you're using the fabric from the kit. And it says, place this small pocket fabric centered along the design with the folded edge covering the placement line. So you want to bring it a little bit above that placement line. And the raw edges against the right side of the hoop as shown, tape exactly as shown. But I mean, you don't want the foot to get caught. So here's our fabric right here. There's our placement line. I know you can't really see it, but you just want to center this which means uh, don't have don't have it too low or too high. I'm gonna turn my light down on my screen. It's pretty bright. When do you turn your light down in your on your machine? When you're filming, that's about it. Okay. Okay, not too high, not too low, centered so the stitch lines are kind of in the middle. And the folded edge should just go a little bit above that placement line, just a little bit. 
That looks good. Your stripe should be running left to right right now. And tape exactly as shown. This will prevent your presser foot from catching. I'm using my transport tape. It's my favorite. And I love it because it rips so easily and it's nice and sticky. And it's all over my room. You know who else loves it? Poppy. She loves to chip it. We have, you know, this might be from Poppy. I was getting somebody's order ready. I had four rolls of tape where she could reach it and she just chewed them all up. So we've been, we've been using it at the store. Okay, I'm just going to put it right here. And right here. All right, and that way the foot, when it comes around, it's not going to get caught. Um, stitch the small pocket tack down line, then remove the tape. Do not trim the fabric at this piece. I mean, at this time, and I wrote on here, leave bottom piece. I'm not even sure what that means, but I'm sure it'll make sense to us in a minute. Color, use the light, uh, the mint green, which I'm using pistachio. What did I mean? Sometimes it's like a message to myself. Make sure you smooth this down so it doesn't move anywhere. Just uh, doesn't get puckered. If you find that you're getting puckered, stop. Rip that stitch out. You don't want to do all this work and have something that's all icky looking. Jeannie, so I watched the previous video and the, and the note that you left uh, there it has to do when we go over, when we turn the page and start to do the small pocket dividers, yes. the foot on the brother machine could get caught. Okay. So I said, leave bottom piece. Yes. Was that Okay. What bottom piece am I talking about? Did I want to leave the tape? Yes. The tape. Yes. Oh, okay. Maybe I got caught. Uh, oh, leave bottom piece. Okay. So remove the tape. Do not trim the fabric at this time. So maybe we'll just leave that tape, Kathy. You think yes. that's what I meant? Okay, leave your tape. Don't take it off. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> maybe I struggled there. Maybe I should say leave tape. So now it says your instructions are going to say stitch the small pocket divider lines. Note the 8 by 12 design will stitch additional pocket lines. So in the other one, there's like one, but this one, if you look at your screen, I think you have these three and then does it do more than that? If larger pockets are desired, skip this step. Okay, got it. So there's three of them, one, two, three that you see in, uh, that are dark. And then uh, in step number 17, there's gonna be other pockets Dividers, you can skip. Like when I did mine, um, I was like, oh yeah, why don't we do two small and one big? So let me grab my sample. And it's up to you, however you want to do it. So I did these two and then I think I skipped the next step. So I have one big pocket and I have two little ones. Let's see what Dana did in her sample. So in Dana's sample, she has one big here and then she has all the small ones. So it's gonna give you an opportunity. It's gonna stitch, it's gonna cut, it's gonna go the next. So you can decide where you want those pockets. The first one's gonna stitch. If you look at your screen, it's gonna stitch three lines. And if you want, you could just do those three lines. Do you see them right here? One, two, three. I'm gonna stitch those right now. So I am gonna stitch all of step number uh, 16, nine in your stitch out on your screen. So I'm gonna stitch all of these. And then you can decide, do you want to do the next pockets? Do you wanna do the next lines that are gonna make little pockets? If you wanna do this for like pens and pencils, then definitely do the next step because it's gonna divide these into smaller sections. If you want them bigger, then you don't have to do the next step. We can skip it. So let's just stitch these and then you can look at it and then you can decide. Jeannie, I have to pop off, so I'll see you later. Okay, was that Irene? Yep, thank you. Okay, then somebody else needs to keep me on track. Don't forget, if you see me going astray. Bye, okay. Irene. Bye, thanks. We'll see you. 
Irene's the resident. Make sure Jeannie does not mess it up. Check her. Yes. Do you have to remember what the filler block is in front of the Yeah. Is it the corner blocks or the whichever with any of the blocks that come in, so, that don't have um that don't have embroidery. They're just quilted blocks, right? Yes. So they don't need shape flex for that. If they do or did you I can't remember if it told me to hey, do you ladies remember? Do we did you put shape flex on the back of your filler blocks and cup and chair? Huh? Somebody's calling and asking and I can't remember. If I did or not, I don't think I did. She didn't think she did, and she, oh, so but I might have. It's not going to kill you if you do. If you do, it won't kill it. All right. Next step. If you look at your screen, it wants to stitch three more lines. One, two, and I think it wants to stitch one over here. Up to you. If you want to do those smaller pockets, I'm going to do them. So I am going to do this step. And when you look at your instructions, you have your step here, step number seventeen. Step number 10 is what it's actually stitching out. That's your stitching step. So on the screen, mine says 10 of 19. I am going to do this. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit start. Up to you. Yeah, I might have been scared that that foot was going to scoop it. So we'll just take it off after this. And then we're going to do the zipper pocket placement line. All of this is all in pistachio. So whatever color you want to do, but I'm using pistachio. So get your zipper. You should have a pretty lace zipper like this. And once it's done with this, why don't we go ahead and get rid of that tape? I'm gonna use my tweezers, my precision tip tweezers, as long as I remember them. I think I forgot them. So I'll use these. I love these too. I forget what these are called. They're made by Femore. And I love them because they have the tweezers and the seam ripper. So I'm always ready to fix whatever mistake I've made. Marlene, what's your question? Can you still get zippers? Did what? Can you still get the Kimberbell zippers? No. They, so I do have some Kimberbell zippers at the store, but I cannot get them. I do have some of these in the store. Um, I, I don't know. Can I get a couple of white ones too? Yeah, yeah. Add that to your uh, add that to oh, your I, list. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Yep. All I had yep. was a turquoise one for today, so I'm using that one. So, um, and they also have them um, on. Um, we get them from Checker. I mean, that's like our distributor. So, and I think they do have some other colors. I, I think I got some other colors in this store too. Some really pretty colors. I'll have to put them up. Let's add it to Graydon's list. Graydon is our resident really good on the computer girl. <laughs> the rest of us all struggle. So we wait for her to come in so she can do all that stuff for us. Okay. If you look at your screen, you should be on step number 11. This is going to be your zipper placement. Let's look right here. You mean 19? Oh, I see down below 11. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. So it says here, you're going to see up here that it's going to stay, stay, it says 18, but your stitch out is actually 11. And that's what you'll see right here on your screen. 11 out of 19 steps. Okay. Thanks. No worries. So the zipper pocket placement line, it says place the zipper pocket front vinyl with one long edge. So we're going to get our vinyl with one long edge centered along the placement line tape in place. The excess vinyl will, will be towards the top of the hoop. All right. 
So we're gonna place it on top of what we've embroidered net down below. Grab your vinyl, hopefully you can find it. I'm gonna clean mine off a little bit. And it's gonna go up here and it's centered to uh, this placement line that we just stitched. And I know mine looks tiny, but it's gonna be plenty big enough because what it's going over is it's going over this piece, the, the five by nine that we used before. Okay, center it. And it wants you to tape it just on the sides right here. So line up that edge with the line that we just stitched, have an equal amount left and right, and tape it in place. It's hard to see with the vinyl, right? And slide that back on. Let's look. Um, so we taped it in place. And now it says place the quilted zipper pocket lining fabric stitched in part one right side down with the trimmed edge center along the placement line tape in place the excess fabric will be towards the top of the hoop so we're going to grab this piece right here okay so, jenny is the vinyl right on that line or should it be a little bit past the line it's right on it it's right going to be right on that placement line the edge is right on the placement line this too we're going to place this the quilted pocket lining fabric stitched in part right side down here's our trimmed edge this was the one that was the right that we had you know that we cut it off you're gonna place that right side down this edge is going to be lined up right there as well um tape in place the excess fabric will be towards the top so we're going to put this down next center it place it right on that line again and go ahead and tape it Then. This is a scary part. Is it scary? Don't be scared. Don't yeah. be scared, but make sure you're centered. Like right here, I can see this edge right here with this edge. It's kind of centered to it. Don't be scared. And I'm going to put one piece up here on the top. Just like the picture, I'm going to put one piece over here on the side. Okay, so this edge right here is right on that placement line, as is the edge of the vinyl, right on the placement line. Everything's centered. I'm sorry, do you stitching line on the line or the edge of the fabric on that line? I'm doing the so this. This is the the side that we had trimmed. Okay. So that edge is right on that line and the vinyl is right on that line. If you're not right on it, it's going to give you like a quarter inch seam allowance. If you're off like a 16th of an inch, even if you're off like an 18th, an eighth of an inch, I think you're going to be fine. So just go ahead and place both of those down. Oh my God, don't be scared. It's going to be fine. All right, here's our picture. All the excess fabric should be above that placement line and that everything is... Oh, I see what you're saying because it's going a little bit over, right? Right side down with the trimmed edge centered along the placement line. I guess if you go a little bit, but I mean, I think it just wants you to place. It's going gonna, it's gonna to give you a quarter inch seam allowance. So it's going to move in a quarter of an inch. So you should be fine. I'm just going to leave mine. You know what? I finished mine. What was that? I finished mine. And it was fine? It I finished it. Fine. I'm done. Oh, you're done. You're already done. Okay. Yeah. Let's go ahead. We're going to stitch, uh, stitch the zipper pocket seam, uh, and remove the tape, remove the hoop. Go ahead and slide it on. Which color is the lining? Is that the solid color? You mean this right here? This is pretty no, petals. I'm still way back on 10. You're on the step right before. That's going to be. Nine and 10 is where I'm at. Nine and 10 is going to be. And when you say nine and 10, are we talking stitch out or steps on the book? Steps on the book, nine and 10. Okay, nine and 10 out. are going to be the, uh, the, this mint green. Okay, got it. All right, Thank you. I'm going to lay this down. I'm going to hold my fabric here so it doesn't go anywhere. Don't forget to put this down. I have a green light now. 
I'm just going to hold it right here, but make sure that I don't let that go over my finger and we should be good. Got a little feedback from somebody. I'm going to go through and just mute. So we, we good. All right. And that'll stitch that down. Let's look and see what it wants us to do next. We just did step number 12 and we stitched that down. Remove the tape, remove the hoop from the machine. Don't remove the project from the hoop. You're just going to remove the hoop from the machine. And then this was the part that almost killed me. I was like, what did I do? All right. Let's go ahead and take this over here. We're going to take off our tape. Okay, remove the tape. So I'm going to remove my tape first. Sorry, let me get you, give you a better angle. This is what the edge of my table at home looks like. I have all like tape and I just pull it off of there. Uh, remove the hoop from the machine, trim the excess fabric close to the zipper pocket. Placement line, be careful not to cut the vinyl or the quilted zipper pocket line. So they want you to trim the excess fabric. So this fabric right here, the stuff that's underneath it. Don't trim, don't worry about trimming this. Um, we're just going to trim this fabric that's underneath this piece and this piece. So it's right in line with this piece. Okay. And move that up a little bit so I can see. Terry, <laughs> oh my goodness, I know, right? You're like, am I doing this right? Did I just stitch that right? We're cutting fabric away? What if I can't take that back? I know, don't worry. There we go. How is that? That wasn't too scary. We just trimmed, you can see here in the picture, I know it's hard to see on mine, but we just trimmed that, the little fabric that was like sticking out underneath. We trimmed that close. Be careful not to cut the vinyl or the quilted zipper pocket lining. And next thing it wants you to do is it wants you to cut the stabilizer. Here we go. All right, how are we? Is everyone okay? I'm looking to see. Looks like some people might still be cutting. Is Kathy Tate's good? Liz is looking up. Linda, you look like you're cutting. Just keep cutting. Don't be scared. You're good. Okay. Oh, look at Sharon. Sharon's done. Sher Sharon just did it all. So she can be like, stop, don't do that. So don't be scared. Sharon's watching. If we're doing anything we shouldn't be doing, she's going to stop us. I cheated uh, and I did it yesterday. <laughs> Yesterday, are you doing another one with us today? I'm just watching today, tagging along today. Okay, exactly. All right, let's look at the picture here and don't be scared. It says cut the stabilizer exactly along the zipper pocket placement line, extend the cut half an inch past each end of the line. The pocket placement line, okay. So that pocket placement line, look, it's not this, this that stitched it down. It's this right here. That's your pocket placement line, the one underneath. All right, you're going to grab your ruler. We're going to cut, cut the stabilizer exactly along that line and extend it half an inch past each end. So here is the, where it ends. Whoop, can you see that? We're going to cut it half an inch past that. 
and half an inch past that. If you want, you can kind of like put that up a little bit. And then it says cut only the stabilizer. So we're going to cut the stabilizer. Let's do it. Here we go. Stabilizer, exactly along that. And if you like, if you get like the tiniest bit, what you don't want to cut is this line right here. This line right here that just stitched everything down. Zipper pocket placement line. We're going to cut all the way along that. And we're going to go half an inch. And if you need a little pair of scissors that clip over here and over here, you can do that. I'm going to use my rotary cutter. And um, I'm using my rotary cutter. And I'm using my uh, the edge of my ruler. OK. To see, I have a hole there. Don't worry. Your stuff's, you need that. We're going to be putting some stuff through there. And this is the stabilizer. Now it wants you to extend it half an inch. So here is, it went right to there. I'm going to go half an inch out. I'm almost out there. So half an inch. And half an inch on this side. Jeannie? Yeah. This is Connie. I'm sorry, I'm a little behind and I'm kind of confused if I'm missing a piece of fabric. Um, I'm on step 20 where it says, place the quilted zipper pocket lining fabrics stitched in part one. Oh, okay. That's, yeah, that's this that we've stitched that's in that. part A. That's gonna okay. be the pretty stuff right there. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we did our, our line. And then we extended it half an inch on both sides, half an inch here, half an inch there. And then it wants you to cut only the stabilizer or quarter inch towards the top of the hoop on each end of the cut line. So we're going to go up quarter of an inch. I can't remember if it was like right here or is it right on the edge? Do you remember Sharon's here? I'm going to go right here. Because it says uh, cut only the stabilizer a quarter inch towards the top of the hoop on each end of the cut line shown in red. So it doesn't look like it is. Looks like we go right here. That's what I, I think did. it's right yeah. next to the the plastic yeah. because we're going to flip this out. Yeah. That's so we're going to go did. right. Is that good? So we're going to go right here. I'm just going right on the outside just a little bit. And then I'm gonna do the same thing right here. I'm just gonna fold it back and I'm gonna go right here, quarter of an inch. Flip it back, cut it up. All right, tuck. You're gonna tuck the zipper pocket lining, lining, but not the vinyl through the hole in the stabilizer. So we're gonna take this, not this. This is the part that killed me. When we did that, when I did this, and, and it's much smaller um, when you do the five by seven. I flipped it through and we wanna pull it nice and taut. And then we're gonna fold it to the other side. On the five by seven, when I folded it through, I thought this had to go all the way up. And I was like, oh my God, it doesn't, it's not matching. And I was so stressed. I was like, what did I do? Did I load the wrong design? Did I cut it wrong? And it's just to get this out of the way. That's all you're doing right now is you're just getting it out of the way. So it's not meant to go all the way up. I thought it was going to go all the way up here and that was where it was supposed to be. That's not the case. So you're just going to fold it up. You want this fold to be nice and taut, like right there on the stitch line. Turn the hoop to the back. Uh, flip the zipper pocket lining right side up over the completed. And it said the completed embroidery. So I thought it had to cover the whole thing. It does not need to cover the whole thing. Tape the edges and corners securely in place. So I'm just going to make sure this is nice and folded. And I'm going to tape my corners. I learned my lesson the other day when I didn't check. So tape your corners and then you could tape the whole thing if you want. It just wants this to be securely out of place. I'm just going to tape my sides. Okay, everyone has their stuff taped out of the way. So you have a nice fold right here on the edge. Once you have that done, we're going to flip it back to the front. 
and it says turn the hoop to the front, smooth the vinyl towards the bottom of the hoop and tape in place. Make sure you don't have any ickies on here. Fold it down and smooth it. And um, and then tape in place. Let me grab my tape. And it should just look like this. And then you're gonna you're gonna stitch the zipper pocket front tack down line. And then we'll remove the tape. Don't worry, the stabilizer is gonna get cut out of there. Just make sure it's nice and taut and out of place. I'm just gonna put my tape down here on the bottom. Okay, smooth. We good? Just trust. This is what the front looks like. Vinyl is down. This is what the back looks like. The quilted part's out of the way. It's gonna come down when we're done. Okay, let's go ahead and slide that on the machine. How are you doing? Does anyone need help? Jeannie? Yeah. When, when I folded that piece through to the back, yep. that, that seam was so bulky on me. I used my fabric folding pen just over that seam just to have it lay down a little bit, and it did help. Oh yeah. Okay. So so um Lynn used it used, I think it is it made by Clover? Yes. We have one here somewhere. And I think it what it has is like a little starch in there. So she went ahead and she put a little bit of that folding pen on here and then folded it back and that made it fold a little bit easier. So whatever you have to use. Marlene, do you have a question? Yeah, I do. Um, I'm showing when you turn it back over to the front. At the bottom, underneath the vine, on the bottom line where you cut that away, I'm showing some of the fabric there. Should I have cut that away? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, no, because are you? Because it should be folded no, back. No, now look. Now look. When you're looking at your little vinyl window. Yep. Okay. On the top of that stabilizer along there, I still have no. On the top of the stabilizer, go down a little bit. On no, the no, no, go up. Go up. Go up. Go up. Right there. I'm still showing fabric there. Should I have cut that away? I have, I don't know how you would have fabric there because it, it should be stitched. There was fabric that you were supposed to cut away, but I don't think it would show, would it? Mine's when, showing. You, right, in step number 22, you mm -hmm. were supposed to cut excess fabric, but then it's stitched. You know, all of that is stitched and folded over. So I don't know how you have fabric there. Just uh, remember, just remember, you're going to cut away the stabilizer. So if it's if it's on the stabilizer, you're still going to be OK. It's on the stabilizer. And then okay. once you cut the stabilizer away, it'll be gone. Oh, OK. OK. Yeah, there's about a 16th of an inch uh, fabric on the, on the stabilizer. On your stabilizer? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, we're you're gonna see in this step right here, we're gonna cut away all that stabilizer. It's gonna be gone. Oh, okay, good. Okay. 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 Cool. Thank you for answering that. Okay, we are uh, we just did this step right here. We're gonna slide the hoop back onto the machine and we're gonna stip the zipper pocket front tack down and then remove the tape. So go ahead and slide your machine on. It's gonna stitch this and it's gonna tack this vinyl down. Yeah, I was wondering, Marlene, how that fabric, like what it was connected to. I couldn't, my brain couldn't wrap around it. So sorry. Okay, I'll just, I'll have to go back and look at the instructions to see where I didn't cut that away. I don't know. Okay, look at your up. screen. It should say step number 13 and it should be in orange and it's going to do the tack down for the vinyl. If you have that and let's see if color makes a difference. It wants you to do this in the same mint green so i'm just going to go ahead and let it stitch it down and am i not i am threaded
you're going to remove the hoop from the machine, turn the hoop to the back, and we're going to trim only the stabilizer. So we're going to do it from the backside, and we're going to we're going to trim out that stabilizer close to the stitch line inside of the zipper pocket front tack down. Be careful not to cut the vinyl or the stitching. Only the stabilizer. So let's go ahead and grab this out. It's back over here. Grab your hoop. Flip it and trim that stabilizer out. Is this going to fix it, Marlene? Is your that extra fabric going to be gone? Don't trim your stitches, just the stabilizer. Jeannie, is this being recorded where we'll get to view it later? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's I the got to get my husband ready for work. Yeah, the pre-recorded version is available, and then you're going to get this, too. I will send this out to everybody. Oh, great. Jeannie, the Thank reason you. why I knew what she was talking about is because mine had the same thing. So did it just appear afterwards? After we cut yeah. it out? Okay, yep, perfect. This is my cutout piece. Got it, Kathy. Okay. Yeah, so here, here's your clear window now. That was step number 29. Be careful not to cut the vinyl. And I think, did it say to remove the taper? No, turn to the back, trim stabilizer. Be careful not to cut the vinyl stitching. Now we're going to stitch the zipper placement trimming line, and it wants you to put in your white. So I'm just using, you could put in bright white, but I'm just using the linen. Another one of my favorites. So we're going to put this back on the machine. How are we doing? Anyone need help? We okay? I know. Donna said, oh, it's scary. Yeah, there's some scary stuff going on there. <laughs> we're, we're going to be fine. It's going to be beautiful. Okay, slide that on. Make sure you're not pushing your ent entire arm down. I'm going to go ahead and put, oops. Did you see that? My thing, uh, my thing went forward. You don't want that. That's for later. I need a more aggressive piece of tape. Hang on. Okay. Make sure you don't see that lining. It should be a clear window like this. Okay, slide it on. Okay, I'm gonna change out my thread. I'm gonna put my linen in, but you can put whatever color you want. That zipper is bright white, so you could just use white. And go ahead and stitch the zipper placement trimming line. We are going to place our zipper there. We're going to trim there too. Just go ahead and hit start. And what it's doing right now is it is stitching this part right here. And then we're going to cut it out. So after it does that line, it says, using a rotary cutter and a small quilting ruler, cut out the vinyl inside the zipper placement trimming line, trimming along the stitch line. Be sure to cut off the placement trimming line stitches as you go. So you want to cut those stitches out completely. All right, here we go. Don't be scared. <laughs> I know. Because you can't take cutting back, right? That's the scary part. Once you cut, you're cut. It wants you to cut those stitch lines too so that you don't have to pull them out with your tweezers later. Or, uh... Here we go. Um, You know what I forgot? I want my... I forgot my little, little square ruler. Because it's nice to have a ruler that fits into the hoop. 
So use your rotary cutter and you can take your ruler and put it a little bit to the right of that line so you can just totally get it. Hang on, I gotta put this out of the way so I can see. So I'm gonna put it right on that line. We're cutting out because you need to be able to open up that zipper. Okay, got it. Don't go past, don't cut off the other stitches. Don't cut outside. Be careful. If you feel like you're gonna get too close with your rotary cutter, use your scissors. I'm just gonna snip right inside of this. I'd rather have you undercut than overcut. All right, do you keep up that part again? Cause I just sewn the, um, the line. So what line are you cutting? We're cutting, you want to cut this, the line that we just sewed down and you want to cut the stitches off too. When you get oh, to the oh. edge, I would just use your scissors because you don't want to cut through this, this line right here. You don't want to cut through that. So if you need to just get your scissors and just cut right inside of that. Okay. So be careful with that rotary cutter. Don't get too close to that edge. Just use your scissors. So we're cutting on both lines. Oh yeah, you're cutting the whole thing out. Okay. And see how I have the stitches too? You wanna to cut the stitches too. Cutting right to the right of those stitches. Okay, this is what I just cut out. Cut out the vinyl inside the zipper placement trimming line, trimming along the stitch line. Be sure to cut off the placement trimming line stitches as you go. So I cut the stitches out too. Okay, if you have the five by seven kit, the zipper, it's in, it's invisible. It looks like this. So just make sure your zipper pulls where it should be. If you have the eight by 12, cause these zippers were different, your teeth are gonna be up here. Do you see the difference? Like one of them has like the teeth showing and the other one there it's invisible and tucked to the back. So just when we place this down, that does make a difference. So uh, for step number 32, once you have this little piece trimmed out, it says place the zipper right side up centered over the hole in the vinyl with the zipper pulled to the left of the hoop and tape the zipper in place. And they have it, they have it taped down in three different spots. All right. So we're going to put it like this. The zipper pull should be to the left. Your teeth are going to be up five by seven. Teeth are going to be down. That's just the zippers that they sent us. Eight by 12 zipper teeth up pull over, we're gonna lay it down and you're placing it on top and you're placing it centered to the hole that we just cut out. All right, you can peek underneath. A good way to do this is to just pull back your zipper as you tape it down and just make sure it's centered. And you want this centered, you don't want this pull too close or the end, this metal part, that's the scary part. You don't want that too close. You want like your zipper pull like an inch and an inch outside of the, uh, the trim edges. And I'm gonna just peek underneath here and just make sure it's centered. I'm gonna tape it. Where's my tape? Just take a little peek underneath Make sure it looks good. And it's hard to see because it's on the vinyl. Here, maybe it, this shows better. Can you see the like where the cutout is? So if you need to put something underneath it so you can see it better. And I'm peeking under here and laying this down.
Jeannie, can you show the placement of the five by seven zipper? Uh, hey, um, Lori, do you mind grabbing me a five by seven kit? It's the it's gonna be the same. It's just make sure your zipper pull, make sure it's right side up. Make sure your zipper is right side up. You can tell because your zipper pull will be on the right side. I just want to show them the zipper on this one. Do I have to take it? Let me take it up. It's okay. I got it. You got it. I got it, girl. Okay, here is this is the five by seven zipper. Okay. See the five by seven zipper? The zipper teeth are, because it's an invisible, it's on the back side. So the five by seven zipper, sorry if that's confusion. You're going to put it like this. The zipper pull is still going to be on the top and the zipper teeth are going to be um, on the underside. But this is your right side. With this zipper, with the larger zipper, the zipper teeth are on the top. Thank you. So Okay, I'm just going to peek under here, make sure I'm laying this down. If you want to put another piece, like more than one piece of tape down, you can. I'll put one here. Yeah, I think I, I mentioned that in the video because I was, and I'm just folding it down, looking and making sure that center is right down the center of this. And I'm going to take one more, fold it back, make sure my center is lined up, take this zipper pull, fold it out of the way. You don't want him to flip back while you're stitching. That's like always scary. If anyone has run into a zipper with your embroidery foot, that's never fun. Okay, so it should look like this and should be taped down. And eight by 12 teeth up, five by seven teeth down. There's five by seven teeth down because that's the right side. All right, once we have that taped down, we're right here, place the zipper right side up, centered on the hole in the vinyl and with the zipper pulled to the left, tape the zipper in place as shown, turn the hoop to the back, be sure the zipper is centered over the hole. This is your final check, so we can go ahead and turn it back here and take another peek. And there's, I know it's hard to see because it's shiny. Am I centered? I'm actually a little bit low right here. Hang on, I'm gonna move mine up a little bit. I was low. I was low right here. I'm barely low. I think it's good. I think I'm good. So you can check it. That's your final spot to make a check. And then if you like what you see, put it on your machine and you're gonna st stitch the zipper tack down. Carefully remove all the tape from the zipper. I'm gonna go ahead and slide this onto your ma my machine. Make sure this fabric here doesn't fold forward. It should be clear. And we're just sewing the zipper on. Oops. There we go. How are we doing? Anyone need help? I know some people are catching up too. And your screen, you can check it. It should, mine says emerald green and it's the tack down. Um, as far as colors go, I'm just doing the white. It's showing that you're just doing this in the white. And let's go ahead and tack it down. You're, this is your opportunity. If you feel like it's not where it's supposed to be, you can stop it. You've got your start stop right here. And you just um, sew right over the tape, Jeannie? Right over the tape. We're gonna pull the tape off. Okay, I'm using the um, Kimberbell um, paper tape. Will that work? Yeah, yeah, Kimberbell pa tape, paper tape is great.
watch out for your zipper pull. Make sure he doesn't get in the way. We've got three more steps left. Um, we just did this. We're gonna carefully remove our tape. We just stitched the zipper down. I'm gonna grab my tweezers and let's get rid of that tape. Yeah, don't scratch your vinyl. You might need it right here in between when it goes over the teeth. I leave that piece over here so my pole doesn't get in the way. All right, that was step number 34 of our uh, instructions, step 15 of our stitch out. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the page. And now what it wants you to do is it wants you to remove the hoop from the machine, turn the hoop to the back, and we're gonna flip that fabric over. Remove the tape from the zipper pocket lining. Um, flip the zipper pocket lining right side down over the vinyl and tape the edges and corners in place. We're going to go ahead and remove this. I'm going to put the camera over here. Okay, I took all the tape off of here. I'm going to flip it over. We're going to take off this. We're going to flip it down. And that's how you have that really pretty lining behind all the vinyl that we just did all that stitching with. It kept it all out of the way. And then we're gonna tape this down. Tape it in the corners. All right, and if you wanna put more tape on it, you can. I'm just taping mine down in the corners. Uh, flip the zipper pocket right side down. Now we're gonna stitch the zipper pocket lining tack down line and remove the tape from the back of the hoop. So we're gonna go ahead and flip this over and it's going to do the tack down right here. And then we'll go ahead and take the tape off. So let's go slide this back on the machine. Pull that hoop back here, the, the arm part, so it doesn't get, um, so it doesn't push it back out of, uh, out of calibration. And we're going to go ahead, uh, color makes a difference. They want you to put that mint green back in. So whatever color you want to use, I'm going to go ahead and change that thread out. Uh, Jeannie, my yep. zipper tape didn't sew down. I think I must have cut my hole too big. Your zipper tape didn't. So the zipper's not. The zipper's not. Um. No, it didn't sew down. It's just sewed right next to the edge. Oh, great! I would want to save it. Do you think you could? Uh, can you take it to your sewing machine and sew it down? Because you're almost there. I don't know if you could convert over I think to I think of it. Or is it is it is the hole way too big? It's um sewn right on the edge, so it's just a little bit too big. Do you think you could save it by stitching it down with the sewing machine? I'll try that, yes. Okay, see if you can do that. Okay. 
Yeah, it should have been like right, uh, right outside that stitch would have been all you wanted to do. Anything bigger than that might have been too big. Okay, I'm going to be sewing. Uh, we're doing the tack down for the lining that we folded back and you should see it through the window. Okay, Jean, I'm just kind of catching up. So I got the tape off. So you're saying we put the, um, the other fabric back down, tape it down, and then we're tacking it? Yeah. So this was the part A that was folded up and I just flipped it back under so okay. you can see it. So it's pretty. And now it's just going to tack it down on the bottom part. Okay. Do you have yours flipped? Looks good. Yeah, yeah, as long as you can see it through the window. Here's the vinyl where you couldn't, where we had it clear. And now I took the fabric and flipped it back. And that's the step that we did in part A. So this was this step right here. So it was step number 36. We flipped the fabric back. We stitched it down just on that bottom part. And now we're gonna take the hoop off and get rid of the tape so it doesn't get all stitched down. So go ahead. Yeah, Linda, you did a lot of work. You're really close. I would see if you could save it just by trying to stick it down top and bottom. As long as you can get that zipper secure, you should be okay. I just put two pieces of tape on the backside. So I'm just, hang on, let me grab this. I just taped it right in the corner. So it wants you to get rid of that. It says remove the tape. If the, hole is, if the hole is too big, she could even take ribbon on the back side and sew ribbon on either side to close up that hole to the zipper. So, um, so did you hear that, Linda? Like you could, yeah, you could put some, like, hang on. If this is, I'm trying to see if I have some. Okay. Let's say this is the piece of vinyl. Yeah, we're we're trying to like right now figure out a way that you could save it. <laughs> so it should have been pretty small. It was like okay. Whoop. It was probably was not big. The hole should have been, did I cut it all? Sorry. Yeah, I was trying to cut the thread off and I think that's why I made it a little, uh, a little too wide. Like I put my ruler right on that thread and then cut. So it was just like a hair over. So the hole should have been like this big. So I think somebody was saying you could add some fabric if you wanna save it. So maybe if your hole was a little too big, is that, I'm not sure who gave the suggestion. Was that Miss Kathy or was that Sharon? It was me, April. Oh, it was April. So you could, take, you could take finished ribbon and just put it on the back side to sandwich the hole to the front of the zipper with the vinyl in between. Oh, you could. So you could maybe put some, uh, you mean add this in? Right on the back side. To close so it up a little close bit. It up and then sew so again around it. Yeah, so you could try something like that if you had cut your hole too big, but the hole should have been small. It should have been like just cutting off a sliver. Like this is all the, I cut right to like just a smidge outside the stitch. That was it. That's all you should have cut. Or you should have cut right on that stitch, but it shouldn't have been further out. Okay, we'll figure out if we can try and save that somehow, Miss. Linda. All right. So once you have that turned over, you removed your tape. Now it wants you to stitch the ribbon placement line. You're still going to leave that same mint green thread in there. I'm using pistachio. I'm going to slide that on. I pulled off my tape, I think. And I'm going to let it stitch that ribbon placement line. Pay attention to where it is because it's the same color. Well, that is hard to see. I think you should do a different color. I don't know why I didn't make a note. I'm just going to draw on here. I can kind of see it. Mine's right here. So there's my ribbon placement line. 
Are we still in white or will we just go back to the um, pistachio? It, it, it asked you to do that with the uh, with that like mint green, but that was hard to see. I would do that in a different color. I would say, uh, you know, do that in your tide. Is it tide pool or tide water? Tide water or visible color or visible color. Okay. Now it wants you to take your ribbon. So go ahead and grab your ribbon. You should have ribbon in your kit. Fold the ribbon in half and press the fold. So here we go. If using a ribbon with a wrong side, fold the right sides together. So right sides together, the ribbon in your kit doesn't have a right or a wrong side. And place the folded ribbon with the center fold a quarter inch over the ribbon placement line with the excess ribbon lying over the pouch and tape in place as shown. So they want you to go ahead and we're gonna fold it in half. Whoops, sorry. I'm gonna fold my ribbon in half. And that folded edge is gonna go past the placement line. And it says just a quarter of an inch. And you're gonna tape it right inside. So we're gonna do this. Here's our fold. There's my placement line, quarter of an inch. And it wants you to put your tape right here. And you can put a piece of tape right below too. So piece right here. And then I'm gonna put one more piece right above. And before it stitches your, um, if you can't see it, that's okay. Your needle's gonna be right to the right of it and it's gonna stitch over. So if it looks like it's not, not in the right place, we can move it over a smidge to the right or to the left. Uh, it does want you to just use that same color. And your excess ribbon is gonna be above. This is the fold right there. And I look, it looks good to me. My needle is right to the right. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let it stitch. If it's not where you need it to be, move it. Just go ahead and move that ribbon over a little bit to the left or to the right. And that was step number 40 where it just stitched it down. We're gonna open the zipper three quarters of the way. This is really important if you wanna be able to use that zipper pull. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Ready? We're gonna unzip that zipper three quarters of the way because you need to be able, you don't want to cut off the zipper pull. Take it, fold it in. Don't let it go out because sometimes you might hit it. Just fold it inward. And then this, we're going to just go ahead and put him up inward too. Okay, zipper pulls open and then fold your zipper pull to the left. So that's 41. We went ahead and we opened the zipper. We took our ribbon and we folded it out of the way. Make sure the ribbon is laying inside of the project. Tape the ribbon in place. Okay, this is where I feel like this piece would be really nice with a piece of like fusible uh, fleece on it. So it wasn't like so thin feeling because, and you can do that with the next project. If you wanna do it right now, put a few piece of fusible piece because it just feels like fabric on top of your project. Um, so it would be nice if it was a little bit more cushy. I'm just gonna put mine on the way it is. If you wanna go ahead and put some fusible fleece on there, you could just to make it a little more cushy. This step here says, and we're almost done, place the outer fabric right side down, centered over the project and tape the corners. So here is our last piece of fabric and it wants you to put it right side down. 
Make sure you're covering everything, all of those stitch lines. You can check them underneath. You can fold this back to make sure you placed it up high enough. Right down here, you want it to go low enough, which I am low enough. And you wanna tape all those corners. So go ahead and tape your corners. There's my tape. So Jeannie, I got a little messed up. I think um, I didn't realize I, I uh, had did the placement lines and I sewed it without the um, the ribbon there. So I need to go back to re-sew the ribbon. So do okay. I just... Um, so if you wanna go back, like this that? right here shows you what step we're on. That's the finishing step. If you don't want that, this is where you go forward and backward stitches. Just touch that. And this arrow goes to the next step. This arrow goes to the previous step. Go ahead and go back. The tack down for your ribbon should be orange. Orange, okay. Oh, she should be tangerine. What was that? Tangerine. Oh, that's the tack down? That's the tack down for the ribbon. Okay, I didn't miss it then. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, just go ahead and tack it down. I'm going to go forward. I already did my tack down, so I'm going to go back to the previous step. This is step number 19, your last step. I'm going to tape it all in the corners. And like I said, if you do want to add a piece of fusible fleece, this is your, add it right now before you do this tack down. I'm just going to sew mine down. Tape the corners. I'm going to pull it nice and taut. You good, Liz? Yeah, I just need to catch up where you're at. So you're putting another... So I'm just taking the last piece of fabric that we have. I didn't uh -huh. even press mine. And you're going to lay it. So you tape your ribbon down so it doesn't get stitched down. Did you open up your zipper? No. Mm -hmm. Open your zipper because we're going to cut. And so if your zipper pull is outside of here, it's going to get cut off. And then there's going to be no way to unzip. So take your zipper and unzip it three quarters of the way. Okay. Fold your zipper pull in and tape it down so it doesn't get stitched. I'm going to lay this down. I'm going to smooth it out. I'm going to tape it down in the bottom corners too because I taped it in the top corners. And we're going to do that last stitch out. This is the last step that's going to be stitched on the machine. I'm going to fold this down. And as it's stitching, I'll probably like use my fingers just to kind of smooth it out too. Okay. And I'm ready to go. Make sure you shouldn't see the zipper pull out here. If you do, you didn't open it up and it's gonna, we're gonna, it's gonna get cut off. So make sure that zipper pull, you pulled it back into the project. Okay, this is our last step right here. Oh, might have to, oh, I made a note here. You might have to raise the foot height 0 0.10 for part of this. I think part of it's thick. Let me feel right here. We're gonna just let it go. If it feels like it's really thick, this part right here is a little bit thick. You know what? Yeah, it's a little thick right there. So we're gonna be careful. This is where we have to be careful. And I'm gonna show you right here where it folded back, it's a little thick right there. So we're gonna pay attention to that. I think I raised my foot height up with the other one. All right, gonna hit start. Right here, it's thick. So I'm smoothing my fabric. I'm gonna stop it right before. You can feel it with your finger. This part here is thick. Let me see if I can get a little closer. You can go nice and slow over this part too. If you don't wanna raise your foot up, just kind of squash it with your finger, hold it down. And what it's going to do, if you hold down that button, it's going to go really slow until you take your finger off of it. I'm going to smooth out my fabric. It was so okay. It went up. I don't know. I'm going to feel it. It should be fine going this direction. It's climbing up and over. Uh, Goodbye. I want to feel it here. Just make sure it's good. My full, my fabric's folded. I can feel it's going upward. I think you should be good. There we go. That's the hardest part right here. There's those two thick spots.
All right. Let's see. Is it going around one more time? It is going around one more time. I am going to stop it right here just to make sure it goes up and over this nice and smoothly. I'm just going to hold it down just to go up that over that bump. Holding it down is just going to let it stitch really slowly. And then you can just take your finger off and it'll resume its normally its normal speed. I always do that if I'm like worried. Sometimes it starts dragging your fabric around and you just want to be able to be prepared to stop it before it ruins a project. Okay, we should be good. And it's going to sing because that's the end. Now we're just going to go ahead and finish it up. I'll let everyone let's get your project. I'm going to clean up my little area and we're going to get ready to trim it up. Jeannie? Yeah. You think that outside backing piece that's just the plain fabric, you said you could add some fusible, what do you call it? Um, fusible SF fleece. 101 or something? Not, like not, not SF 101, but fusible fleece, which is a little more cushy. It's right. almost like fusible batting. You think it would be too thick to uh, quilt that back? No. You mean if you wanted to quilt it beforehand? Right. I mean, that's yeah. the outside of your bed. Yeah. No, I think you should. I, if, if like, uh, if, if I were to do it over again and we like, I think quilting it would be really cute because it is the outside of the bag. That's what Dana and I talked about. We were like, the back should have been quilted. It would have been really, really cute. When it's rolled up, that's what you see. That is what you see. So imagine taking that because what we put on there was just one layer of fabric. And if you've already have your on, you can uh, yours on, you can kind of feel it in there. Like you can feel all this stuff. It would be really cute to quilt that pre-class. So what you would be doing, if you want to make another one, if you want to add it to your instructions, and that would be something that you would do on your own. You would be quilting the outer, like whatever your outer fabric is, the eight and a half by 13. And you could just pre-quilt that. Use your clear blue tiles or what you could use your, um, you could use, I mean, you could do it with this pattern, the one that we did here and just blow it up. So you have options. But yes, Lynn, it would be cute if that was pre-quilted. That quilting that they use in there, that one has already been released. So oh. there, there should be a size for that. Are you talking about this one? Yep. Or the one, yeah. So you could mm -hmm. use that. And uh and this size, what was that? It was um, eight and a half by 14. So you could do it like, you could do it in your eight by 12 hoop, I think would be fine because look, we're going to be cutting off an inch here and like, it's almost probably two inches that you're cutting off. So I, would wanted, do like I wanted to do it, but I was afraid the project would be too thick and that's what stopped me. I don't think it, like use project batting, use the Kimberbell project batting. Even if you use like, I always use my Hobbs uh, 80 20. I think it would have been fine. And it would be so cute with the quilting because it is the outside. So I totally get it. Next one. Next one. Yeah. Next one. Put a note in there and you could say pre quilt outer question mark. And that, that could be an option for you. At the very least, maybe fuse it with some fusible fleece and then it's going to be nice and cushy and you wouldn't feel like the in the innards of your project. Okay, we're going to go ahead and finish this off and we're going to do it carefully because it's the very end. Last thing we want to do is like cut anything off. We don't need to. So um, remove the project from the hoop, trim the layers of fabric, vinyl and excess zipper around the perimeter a quarter an inch away from the final outline stitch. So this is your final outline stitch here. Just go ahead and trim it a quarter of an inch away. All right, Giddy, got a question. Yeah. <laughs> the second time around, I didn't slow it and it broke my needle. So um, I'm putting a new needle in, but I haven't done this well. Is the flat spot of the needle the one that goes in the back? Or yes, flat to the back. Okay. Yeah. This is called self-hazing, Liz. You're self-hazing yourself right now. 
right? Yeah. We've all done that. Yeah, because it was a little bit thick there. So yeah. that's why I just held it down and let it go nice and slow through that. The it's first really, time I did that and I didn't do it the second time and it got me. <laughs> yeah, I think it's the climbing up, going from going from uh, like thinner to thicker is where you want to hold it down. When you're going from thick down to thin, it kind of goes easier. It's not as tough on the machine. Um, and we could have raised our foot height too, but yeah, I just kind of went slow. That's like a time where I'll go slowly. Okay, quarter of an inch all the way around. I'm just using my quarter inch mark on my ruler. And I'm going to take my time. I'm going to move this out of my way so I can get my head above my project. You're cutting right through that zipper. Make sure you're not trying to do that with a metal zipper because that's going to ruin your blade. Just with like one of these polyester vinyl zippers, you can cut right through. So a quarter inch away from the stitching line, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. So I'm going a quarter inch away from that last stitch out line. You're cutting that edge of that zipper right off. There we go. And you're gonna have like a nice clean piece that looks like this. Let me go ahead and throw away all this excess. I'm going to heat my iron. Oh, you know what? I ended up sewing it. I don't know if I had like a bad piece of a steam -a seam or something, but in my video, I was trying to like seal it with my steam -a seam. A lot of times I'll just use steam -a seam light, my quarter inch or my half inch, and it wouldn't seal. So I did end up sewing it together. So it's totally up to you how you want to sew it. We are going to trim these corners. So let me grab my scissors. And I like to give them a cut two ways. Be careful, don't get stitch greedy, don't get too close. So, I mean, that is close enough. You can get closer to that. Last thing you wanna do is you're almost done with your project. You don't wanna cut those stitches off. So just like that. Okay, so go ahead and trim your corners. Clip the corners to reduce the bulk. Trim ac across the corner seam allowance, being careful not to cut through the stitches. And then we're gonna go ahead and turn the pouch right side out. So you have a turning hole right here. Reach in there. Be gentle. This is called birthing the baby. I know you think it's not gonna fit, it's gonna fit. Don't worry. This is when some of the projects, literally, this is makes me sweat. I'm like, oh my goodness. I have to take off my sweatshirt because I'm like sweating. And you want to poke your corners out. I have two corner turners that I love. I have my uh, clover one and then I have my... Um, my OESD one, I know other people have that, is it that RK one? It's like this, but really beefy. Um, I never use the little end. I swear that little end will go right through your corner. I recommend always using the big end. I know he looks big and beefy, but he'll still make your corners look beautiful. And I love this one. I love this one for poking out my corners. And then I'll glide this edge along the edge to make sure all my seams come out really nicely. So um I'll go ahead and go in with this one. And I right. just kind of bounce. Go ahead. Just a little catch up. So I've done all the embroidery. So you took it out and then. I just trimmed my corners. I, I trimmed a quarter inch around that stitch line from quarter the lining inch. where you could see it. Okay. 
And then I just trim my corners and I like to trim my corners like this where I do two cuts, one, okay. two. All right, thank you. And just, and then I, you know, I'll take this and just drag it along the edge sometimes. So it's a nice edge. You want to get these corners too on this side. And I'll take this and just kind of bounce it into that corner. Not aggressively. This one, this one should be a little corner too. There's a little corner here too. I know it doesn't look like it, but there is. I don't know why they did it so close to this one side. Okay. You can fold this under and we can give it a little press so it's gonna be easier. Or like Lynn, I, I gotta grab my folding pen. I don't know where mine is, but you can give this a little press. I'm just, if you have that folding pen, what I think that is, is like a little bit of uh, like um, starch. It's gonna give this. And if you want, you could just go ahead and sew this or we could do a little bit of steam -a seam I did my other one. Where is it? I stitched it. I just stitched it right along that edge. It wasn't perfect because I was frustrated. I couldn't get my steam seam to work. I'm going to go ahead and press this. So it's going to be a nice edge. It'll be even all the way. And then I'm just going to put it in my sewing machine. I'm just going to stitch right along that outer edge. Whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. Jeannie, will this and the 5 by 7 be on YouTube? The 5 by 7 I already put on YouTube and it's pre it's uh it's pre-recorded. So that was like just me stitching. Okay. And then this one I'll put on YouTube too. And I'll send you the link. So they'll both be on there. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. I'll fix my zipper and then catch yeah. up. <laughs> See if we can save it. I will. I'm all, yeah. I'm all about saving a project. You were so close. Yeah, I got it ready to go, so it'll work. <laughs> okay. Did you add some, did you do what uh, April suggested and did you add a little bit? You know, I just have my machine ready to go, my sewing machine. Okay. So I haven't done it yet, but I do have, uh, I'm going to do what she said for sure. Yeah, see what we can do about saving that. Especially when you're like as close as you are. I know. <laughs> I just got to say something while everybody's listening. Every time I hear you, you and Patrick talk in the morning on your show, you remind me of, remember Gracie and Alan from a long time ago? I have no idea who Gracie and Alan is. What, was that a show? Yeah. And she, she's like you and he's like, Patrick, it's so fun. You guys are funny. I was talking to night, Gracie. Right. Good night, Gracie. <laughs> I'm gonna have to check it out. I was uh I was telling um Lori, I was like, Lori, she's one of the gals that works here and she's so organized and everything she as she leaves at the end of the day, everything looks so beautiful. I'm like, Lori, am I your Oscar and you're my Felix? Because that's how I feel. And uh and she's so sweet because she never gives me a hard time. But I'm always racing, racing to get here, racing to get home, racing to do something. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on my walking foot and I'm just gonna seal it up that way. So it should it's never be loose enough for you to undo by hand. You should always be using a screwdriver, hand tighten it, and then take a screwdriver and tighten it a little bit more. And don't forget to plug it in in the back. It does not work if you don't plug it in. I'm good with the open toe. Oh, wait, I'm not going to plug it in yet because it's going to tell me not to. So I'm just going to go here to my home button. Because if I don't have to uh, hand stitch it, I'm always going to choose another option. And um, I just, I'm just going to sew this like right on the edge. And let's see what color it is on the front. I'll just go ahead and I'll use this mint green on the whole edge. And I'll just start up here, just so it looks like it's supposed to be there. I'm literally gonna sew right on the edge of the fabric. 
Okay, foot control, where are you? <laughs> I am not a start-stop girl because I'm uncoordinated and I panic. I'm like, oh my God, where's the stop button? And I'm like, off the fabric. And let me grab the foot control. But uh, steam a seam, you can steam a seam it and you can whip stitch it shut. But if I'm doing like the inside of a, of a bat, and I'm just gonna take my time and just make sure I'm, oh wait, oh, you know what? I'm like, why isn't it working? I didn't plug it in. Because if you're in embroidery, it's going to tell you to unplug it. Okay, there we go. And I will like go right on the very edge. I'm just going to make sure I'm lined up right on the edge so it's sealed. And I'm sewing probably an eighth of an inch in. little lock stitch and cut. And I am finito, done. Sealed up, looks perfect. Awesome. And uh, just right on the edge. And it looks like, I mean, to me, it looks like it's just supposed to be part of it. So any way you wanna seal it up, if you're like a hand sewing gal and you just wanna seal it up that way, please do that. I really am inclined to do uh, my seam a seam. But I was like, do I have bad seam seam? And then here is, you could go ahead and give it a little press. Make sure you're not pressing directly on the vinyl. Here is our little zipper pouch. You can put all of your goodies in there. And then take off this piece of tape. Let me get that piece of tape off. But yeah, I think like Lynn says, and I was talking to Dana about it, like quilting that outer part would really make it more special but it's so cute just the way it is and I love this size because I feel like I can really use it and put some stuff in my daughter is a bullet journalist and so I could just give this to her. it'd be a great little present to give to her and I could put like little erasers in here and all sorts of fun stuff and her little pens she always loves that kind of stuff for Christmas and for her birthday this would be great for her birthday but um any questions ladies I just it's have a suggestion yeah. for you all with the, with the vinyl. Uh, as a bag maker, I've learned that you can use a little hammer and hammer your seam where the vinyl is or anywhere where it's thick. And it does really help compress the, uh, the seam to make it flat. So like right here or something where the vinyl yeah, is or even on, or the, on edges. the edges. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So ladies, you could hammer it down, just put something over it so you're not going to damage it. You could hammer it. We could, you could even, um, you could warm it up and like press it. Uh, but yeah, get that edge nice and flat. And then this one in here would be great too. But um, anything, anyone else, anything else? I added a few daisies to mine. <laughs> okay, let's see it. I got to see it. So I don't know if you ladies are familiar with Lynn, but her stuff is beautiful and she always makes it a little more special. Like she takes it to the next level. So I'm going to spotlight her. Do you mind if we show it off? I'm going to add a spotlight. Let me take this one away. Uh, remove spotlight. Oh my God. Okay. Really cute. Do you see her, her little daisy in the top left? Can you hold it up again, Lynn? A little higher, yeah. And then she, a little higher. And then she put some right under here. And look, she's already got stuff in it. <laughs> that I is know. beautiful. I love it. It's so, she, if you, you should follow Lynn because she's always, she takes it to the next level. Her stuff is fantastic. I know some Ooh. other people used fabric too that wasn't, wasn't from the kit. What was that? Thank you, Jeannie. I loved it. April, didn't you use stuff from your stash? Okay, I'm going to spotlight April. Hang on just a second. Okay, spotlight for everyone. Oh, I like there that. There we go. And oh, she's got her, her purple zipper and some batik. Love it. What about the outside, the back? Really oh, cute. Beautiful. Beautiful. Very pretty. Everything's better in batik. <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay, here's Kathy. Okay, Kathy, you, did you say that was Bonnie and what was that again, Kathy? Bonnie, Bonnie and Camille. Oh, oh pretty. 
Oh, that looks so springy and just pretty and delicate and pretty. adorable. There's the back. I need to iron it, but I'm going to sew it just like you, what you just did. And I'm going to use the same thread that yeah. I used for the, uh, put it, I got to move it over to the other machine. I love it. It's, it's so beautiful. cute. Very pretty. Thank you. Sharon, did you have, uh, did you do, let's see Sharon's that she did the other day. Ooh, very chic. Love it. With a oh. red print. Oh, I love it. And that yeah, I, wish, I wish I had done this part in red. But uh, I didn't realize it, it yeah. didn't show up at all here. Yeah. So that's I see why I what you're saying. Looks so cute though. How about the back? Thank you. The outside. Oh, love beautiful. That. I love Thank it. You. Yes. That was great. <laughs> so much fun. Thank you, Sharon. Beautiful. Well, I hope Thank everyone, you. is there any, anyone else? I was looking at what people did with uh, when they went rogue, and I love it all. Well, I will send out this video. You'll get it probably later on this afternoon. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see. I think I see a bunch of you tomorrow for a day at the spa, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll see you in the live feed, too. I'll see you later. Thank you, Jeannie. Thank you, Jeannie. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.